Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on the quotient rule of derivatives. Before we look at our example problem, I'd like to cover some introductory material so that all the pieces of this problem make a little bit more sense. First and foremost, let's talk about what a derivative is. Informally, a derivative is the slope of a tangent line, which is a straight line that touches only one point on the curve of the graph of a function. More formally, however, it is defined as the limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient of the function, which is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. However, if we had to compute this difference quotient every time we wanted to find a derivative, it would become tedious and time consuming very quickly. Instead, we can utilize the rules of derivatives to find derivatives more easily. So now, let's talk about what some of these rules are. First, the derivative of a constant such as the number 5 is always 0. Second, there is the power rule, which states that the derivative of x to the n power is n times x to the n minus 1 power. Third, there is the quotient rule, which is the subject of this video. It states that by viewing a function such as x over x plus 1 as two separate functions of x, one being x or f of x equals x, and the other being g of x equals x plus 1, we can apply the quo or quotient rule, which states that the derivative of f of x over g of x is g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x all over g of x squared. So now, let's discuss our example problem, which is find the derivative and factor your answer completely for the function h of x equals x minus 1 all over x plus 3. The general process that I would utilize when solving a problem like this is to first set up our derivative function using the quotient rule and the information given. Second, evaluate all the derivatives in the function from step one. Third, simplify the answer until it is completely factored and simplified. For step one, we need to set up our function which we will be evaluating. So the first thing we will do is substitute x minus 1 for f of x in the definition of the quotient rule. This results in h prime of x equals g of x times f prime of x minus x minus 1 times g of x all over g of x squared. So now let's substitute x plus 3 for g of x in the above function. This results in h prime of x equals x plus 3 times f prime of x minus x minus 1 times g prime of x all over x plus 3 squared. For step 2, we need to evaluate the derivatives in our function h prime of x. So first, let's evaluate the derivative of f of x. In this case, because f of x equals x minus 1, the derivative of x would be 1 because, due to the power rule, the 1 will come down and x will go to the 0 power, which means it will be 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. The derivative of negative 1 would be 0 because it's a constant. Thus, our result would be h prime of x equals x plus 3 times 1 minus uh, x minus 1 times g prime of x all over x plus 3 squared. Next, we will evaluate the derivative of g of x. Again, our derivative of g of x will be 1 because it is x plus a constant and the derivative of a constant is always 0. Thus, our result is h prime of x equals x plus 3 times 1 minus x minus 1 times 1 all over x plus 3 squared. For the last step, we need to simplify our answer. To do so, we will combine like terms. First, we can see that the x will cancel itself when the negative distributes. So the first thing we can do is eliminate x. Second, 
we can now see that when the negative distributes, negative 1 will become positive 1, thus giving us a final result of h prime of x equals 4 over x plus 3 squared, which is already fully factored. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.